All right, so now let's suppose that we have, um, what if my rectangles were not equal? And so let f be a continuous function, also non-negative between, on the interval between a to b. Then a Riemann sum can be used to, to find the approximate area of f under the curve if the widths are unequal by. And so if you want to find the area, you just, again, you add up all the individual rectangles, area of rectangle 1, area of rectangle 2, area of rectangle 3. This is going to be the sum of all your rectangles. Um, finally, plus the area of rectangle n. And again, an n is the number of rectangles with different widths. So each area, each individual area has its unique height times width. And so the width delta x is different. It's going to be different for each one. And so the problem situation is also, again, is going to determine um, which height to use. And so, again, if we're talking about an L realm, we're going to talk about the left corner height of the rectangle. If we're talking about an R realm, we're talking about the right corner height of the rectangle. Uh, the lowest height, again, is the inscribed. Uh, that's going to be below then uh, the function, the greatest height of the rectangle, that's will be a circumcised rectangle. That'll be above, that will be an over approximation above the um, curve. And again, you can probably take an average, which will be the middle height uh, or midpoint. If you've been given a table, you're going to determine delta x by looking at the change in the x values. All right, uh, the rate of fuel consumption in gallons per minute is recorded in a plane of, uh, during a plane flight is given by the twice differential function r given in this graph below and the table. And so for number one, we're going to approximate the total fuel consumption. So again, r means like the rate of, rate of fuel consumption for this uh, in gallons per minute for this airplane. We want to know how much did the... Uh, um, the total value of fuel that was used between uh, the during the first 90 minutes. Okay, and so we're going to talk about a left Riemann sum. So if I was going to draw a picture, a left Riemann sum is I'm going from here. I'm looks at my t. So we want to talk about the width. My width for my first rectangle. I'm going to go from zero to 30. And I'm talking about a left, so that means I'm going to deal with the left corner. So that my left corner is going to be my height. And so there's my first rectangle. And my width is going to be 30. That's the, that's the distance. My next rectangle goes from 30 to 40. That's a distance of 10. Again, we're talking right here. So I'm creating, a, again, a left height located right there. My next rectangle also goes from 40 to 50. And so again, left my left rectangle height is going to be here. And I'm going from 40 to 50. And there's my third rectangle. Its width is also 10. Uh, the next one, I'm going to have a width of 20. Because so I'm going from 50 to 60. And so uh, 50, my rectangle height is here. And so I'm just going to go right across all the way to 70. There's my fourth rectangle. And then finally, my fifth rectangle has a width of 20. And here is its left corner height on the curve. And that's going to go right straight across. So here's my first rectangle. Here's my second rectangle, third rectangle, fourth rectangle, finally, fifth rectangle. And so if we want to find the area, we're going to take the sum of all these rectangles. Well, the sum is I'm going to my area is going to be approximately, well, my width for my first one is 30. So I'm going to do 30 times, and I'm talking about an L ram, so I'm looking at the left height, meaning the this height right here. And so if you look on the graph, my left corner height is going to be 20. And so I'm going to do 30 times 20 plus, and then my next width for my rectangle 2 is going to be 10, and its height is 30. My my the width for my rectangle 3 is also 10, and its height is 40.
the height of my fourth rect or the width for my fourth rectangle is 20 and its height is 55. And my last rectangle has a width of 20 and its height is 65. And so it's normal to have that 70 left alone. So that's the ending height. That's that height over here, this last dot. We would only consider that last dot if we were talking about an R ramp. That means my beginning dot that I had over here highlighted in blue over by 0, 20, we'd have ignored that one. And so use your calculator, find the sum, and that will give you your approximate area. And so hopefully you'll find the sum to be approximately 3,700. And so we're t again, our situation talks about an airplane flying, so we're talking about fuel consumption, and our fuel, con fuel consumption is in terms of gallons. So over 90 minutes, my airplane has used up 3,700 gallons. Galloons. <laughs> gallons of fuel. If you look at your graph, number two is asking, is this numerical approximation uh, less than the value of the exact area or more? Well, if you notice, our rectangles are below. We call this an underestimation because there's area underneath our curve that we have not taken account. And they kind of look like little triangles. And so we're not considering these with our approximation. So since they have not been considered, you've probably figured out it's going to be less than the value of the exact area. So now let's talk about our explanation. So you know it's going to be less. Let's talk about why. Well, we're talking about an LRAM, and notice that it is an LRAM, and notice our function is strictly increasing. And so since R of X is increasing, And it is an LRAM. Our approximation is going to be less. If our function was decreasing, then uh, if R of X was decreasing, we're talking about an LRAM, if you go ahead and draw that, you'll notice that your approximation is going to be more.